What's up guys, this is Ricky Diaz. We're out here at Zaka Station, testing out this wonderfully built KTM 250 SXF. I've ridden a 2016 stock 250F, and this thing compared to it, it just blows it out of the water. Just all around, it's got even more bottom than the stock 250F did that I rode. The engine on this bike, probably the most noticeable change was the custom piston from Twisted Development. Um, they also did a lot of head work and a Vortex ignition on all three of these things added up to just a great overall engine package. It was a little crazy hearing that thing scream all the way up at those 14,000 RPMs, but man, it just would stay there all day and would never fall on its face. So for the suspension, we have from WP the cone valve fork tuned by a factory connection. Uh, I was really impressed with these forks. I ran in the stock production KTM forks and I was not really happy with them. Um, I only did maybe a few adjustments, um, slowing down the rebound on the forks, but everything else, I don't even think I touched the compression. I was really happy with these forks. They stayed planted. I went down pretty far on the stroke in a couple times, but never really had a bottoming issue, and it tracked really well too after we uh, messed with the clickers a little bit. Yeah, in the rear, we have uh, just a production style shock from WP, also revalved by Factory Connection. I was trying to get the shock to plant better in the corners. It seemed like I could never get the bike to settle at first. We softened up the low speed compression to get it kind of settle in some turns. Really didn't mess with the high speed too much. I was kind of happy with that. And then uh, I'd say probably the biggest change that we did was slow the rebound down. There was a lot of gnarly breaking bumps out there and it was just kicking way too much. So once we slowed the rebound down, it actually became a lot more fun to ride. I could actually trust the bike more pushing through those breaking bumps faster. I would say, yeah, the bike is a, a lot more nimble, but that's not really what I would think would draw me to riding a 250 over a 450. It's the fact that it's a lot easier late in the moto when you're you know, 20 minutes in. It's a lot easier to, to manhandle the bike versus a 450, you can't, you, know, you can't ride the bike, you have to ride with the bike. And a 250F that's this light, um, if you ever get out of shape or in trouble late in the moto, it's a lot easier you know, to recover versus a 450. This project was really cool to work on because of some of the parts we were able to use to fine tune the power of this bike, such as the longer head pipe from FMF, which they developed with the Troy Lee Designs team for more low to mid power, along with working with Jamie Ellis to develop a full race map for this bike. Uh, most people really, if they do any mapping, they're focused on peak numbers on the dyno. Jamie breaks it down to every little percentage gain on the throttle position, which really gives you the feel of what a full factory race bike should be. It was really cool to use Xtrix clamps to help customize this bike further, not only for the adjustable offset, but also for the wide range of bar mounts for the PHDS system to allow somebody a little bit shorter arms like myself or Ricky to kind of bring the bars back to open up how we felt on the bike and like we're not stuck in the forward part of the cockpit. We also got hooked up with Hinson's DDS clutch kit. This is the same clutch that's found on their 450. It's a diaphragm spring style clutch. Uh, here in the 250, it allows us to basically be able to get away with more power and be safer for the engine, along with really being able to hold that power. It was really noticeable playing around on some concrete starts, how well the bike would just squirt and accelerate forward once we had this installed. Beyond that, it was also our first opportunity to try out Pirelli's MX-32 Pro tire. This is the tire they developed in the professional ranks to be better pretty much throughout the day as you start in loam, as you get to the hard pack, just to make sure it keeps a consistency throughout the day. And to top it all off, it was really cool to make this bike really match the Fast House look, work with them on the graphics, and I just think it turned out pretty dang awesome. <laughs>